I'm Nate Story, welcome to Ask the Doctor. This is our inaugural episode where you guys ask me questions and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, so the first question here is from Josh's Aquatics and Railroad videos on YouTube. All right, how cold can an aquaponic greenhouse realistically get? I'd like to be able to run an aquaponic system over this next winter in Georgia and was wondering how cold I could run it without causing problems. Um, so technically you can freeze your system if you really want to. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can. Um, you can pretty much run it, if you're still growing, you can run it as low as your greens, as low as your, um, you know, let's see what you're working with here, as low as you want and keep your greens alive. Now if you freeze everything, of course your plants are gonna die, um, but you know, so long as you keep your fish thawed out, so long as there's a little bit of water in there, uh, you'll have to aerate through the winter, but come spring, you can thaw it out and it'll take about another week or two to get fully cycled up. But um, yeah, I mean, you can pretty much freeze the system solid if you really want to. I wouldn't recommend it, but you certainly can. Jimmy Jones asks, what is your method, what method of growing is your preference, aquaponics or hydroponics and why? And I kind of already talked about this, but um, you know, it totally depends on the market. We do stuff to sell it. We're not just kind of playing around in the greenhouse for fun. So we're, you know, we're, we're looking to make some money and a lot of the time that means hydro, in all honesty, as much fun as aquaponics is. The next question is, I love your Zipco Towers. What criteria did you lose to use to select the media that you did? That's from John. Um, there were a kind of a lot of criteria there. We, I went through a lot of different materials. Honestly, it had to be something that had high shear strength, so it withstood abuse both from, both from the plant roots and from being pulled in and out of towers all day. It had to uh, be compatible with red worms for my aquaponics growers. It had to be mostly air, so great gas exchange from inside the tower to outside the tower and really lightweight. And it had to be somewhat UV re resistant and durable. So those were like kind of the big four criteria that I had. And um, the nice one on the end, of course, was really high specific surface area. That's how much, you know, a surface area was, is within a volume of the media. So that's really what I was looking for. And I settled out on the, on the material that we did because it had all of those things. There are a lot of materials that had like three of the five or two of the five that were a lot cheaper. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we want something that works and works really well, not just something that's the cheapest product on the market. Most of your videos show zip grows, towers inside of a greenhouse. Do they work well outside? Yes, they do. And we grow with them outside during the summer. Give it a shot. Do you have any charts that you can share that, that show the best nutrient levels and minerals in an aquaponic system? This comes from Ben. No, we don't. Sorry. Um, they'll be really similar to hydroponic solutions, so you can pretty much just look it up for hydro and you know what you're gonna need uh, for an aquaponic system. So the next question comes from RK. He asks, how do you get your basil and mint towers to be so full? My towers always have one stem and come out like a tree. Do you clip them a certain way? The answer to that is yes, we do clip them a certain way. Um, we trim them in very specific ways. If you wanna learn more, we have videos on mint and we have videos on um, basically trimming those crops in a way that helps them to be more full. So make sure you check out the videos here and uh, you'll get everything you need to know about uh, that process. I will tell you that if your plants aren't getting enough sun, they're gonna tend to leg out. So you're gonna get really leggy plants kind of going all over the place. And uh, that's not desirable from a production standpoint. So think about how you, uh, think about how you're trimming your plants and you wanna trim them in a way that's gonna enhance their growth and keep them really nice and full and bushy. All right, so the next question is, we all know that the amount of dissolved oxygen in water is of paramount importance. How may one assess it? Kudos for using the word paramount. Kudos for using the word paramount. Um, DO, you could, the best way for just a home grower to assess DO, dissolved oxygen, is just to get a meter. And there are lots of dissolved oxygen meters out there. Hanna Instruments make them, I think, um, I think Blue Lab makes them. There are a few other companies that make fine DOs, uh, DO meters. They're gonna cost you about 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Um, but if you think you have a dissolved oxygen problem, then they're probably worth investing in. You can also do some of the math. Um, there is a dissolved oxygen video that you can check out. 
And uh, that is going to walk you through kind of the, the basics behind dissolved oxygen and help you understand the problem a little better. Another question, I have an aquaponics greenhouse with rafts, media beds, and Zipro towers using solar slash battery power to run a chip pist uh, system. Do I need to run water through the Zipro towers at night? This is from Bradley. Bradley, no, you don't need to run water through the towers at night. Actually, it would be totally awesome if you could run the entire thing just on solar and only run water during the day. At night, you know, you might need a little bit of irrigation just every now and then once or twice a night just to make sure things stay wet. But no, they're not really transpiring. They're not using that much water. Um, the biggie is, you know, if the plants will be taking up water through the night if they were kind of, uh, you know, drought stressed later in the day. So if you have a really hot afternoon and you go into the evening time and your plants are looking a little bit sad, then yeah, give them a little water once or twice a night to help them perk up by the morning. But no, you don't need to run water through the night. It's actually uh, really great for solar systems. What is an aquaponic system for people who live in small places such as apartments that you recommend? All right, Gabe, listen up. Microsystems are really, really tough. No matter what this, uh, you know, no matter what the environment is, the smaller the system gets, the harder it gets to manage. Things swing really easily, things behave very strangely, and it's really hard to nail down what the real problem is with microsystems. So just by and large, I'd say, I'd say if you want to do aquaponics, mess around with something that's like 30 gallons or more, it's gonna be way easier to manage. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of products out there that do a pretty admirable job at trying to make microsystems available to people. So, um, yeah, I, I generally though recommend larger aquaponic systems. They're just way easier to manage. All right, thanks so much for the great questions. Within 24 hours, we got almost 50 questions, so I wasn't able to get to all of them. We'll continue to kind of plug through these. We're gonna try and answer as many as we possibly can. These videos are gonna be coming out every Monday morning at 10 o'clock a.m., so tune in, get your questions answered, and uh, we'll look forward to doing this series with you. I get no kicks on a plane. Are there any other options on that little pop-up? Flying up high with some gal in the sky is my idea of nothing to do. But I get a kick out of you. Let's wait until he's done.